well, there was so much talking going on in the Discord that I was like, shit, we got to fucking, we got we might as well do this, you know? We might as well do this. All right. Um, so, a lot of discussions going on in the uh, old Discord. A lot of controversy. A lot of controversy about MIDI. A lot of controversy about Max Martin. Max, I don't use MIDI Martin. Not many people know that. Max Martin actually doesn't know what MIDI is. Um, uh, he refuses to use MIDI. He said... No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm making all this bullshit up. Um, what's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's good? Okay, look. Here's the thing about today's stream. So we're gonna we're gonna go over the um, the um, what's it called? Bad liar session, right? Which is an old session. Wait, where's my OBS? Where does my screen end? Wait, how do I show this thing? Hold on. Hold on. Uh, oh, wait. I haven't mi minimized. There it is. Okay. Where does the screen start? Oh, okay, there. Look, I'm, I'm hiding my... <laughs> I've tied my text messages. <laughs> um, okay. Why is, why is all the streaming only one... Why is the chat room one color? That's so weird. Um, I just updated my OBS, so maybe that's why. Um... There's the keyboard. Okay, cool. So, all right. Um, hey, Ian, any plans of breaking down happy in the future? Oh, happy the uh, Julia song. That's a great idea. Yeah, I'll do that. I could do that. Um, um, okay. Get out of here. Let's put the chat up here. Let's close iMessage. We don't need that distraction. Ah, oh. What time is it? Oh, look at my hair. Oh, it's so nice without headphones. One day. Um, all right. Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. All right. So, let's see. Okay. So, um, oh, Marco, I'm so sorry, but this will be on YouTube. So, just catch it on YouTube. You're not missing anything. Um, all right. What's up in the chat? What's up in the chat? I'm so happy to be streaming, mind you. It's been a very stressful week. Like, good stress, but um, just a lot of stuff, and I was tired. Actually, speaking of which, triangle? Hold on, I'll be right back. Here. All right. Okay. All right. Um, Vincenzo Noise. It would be nice. Says it would be nice to have your own sample pack with sounds. I love that you said that because I am working on a splice pack. I've been working on a splice pack for <laughs> two years now. It's it's gonna it's gonna come together. Um, okay, so, wait a minute. Okay. Let me see. Got all our, got all our ducks in order. Okay. So, yeah, splice pack's coming. Um, <laughs> Prime Minister of Kenya <laughs> says, any chance for a brief Carolina 
blackout breakdown. My gosh, if I f- could find that session and actually load it, I mean, that was made on like Cubase 5, 4. Horoop says the, the streams got me back into producing. Oh, that is the biggest compliment. I'm so happy for you. I'm so glad you got back into it, man. We missed you. Fuck. Um, oh, the Sophia Mesa song. Yeah, that would be fun. Not the kind of love. That's a great song. Um, Moonlights, bye. Moonlights, bye. Before your phone dies. Love you. Thanks for tuning in. Is it 90% all of our samples? <laughs> Shut. No. What type of shit is that? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Um, okay, how do I feel about the video for this song? Oh, for Bad Liar, I thought it was funny. I don't know. What do I know about fucking music videos? Who cares? Okay, so here, here's the, uh, Young the Giant breakdown. Man, I wish. Hi, Sarah. (laughs) Sorry, I get a weird round, girls. (laughs) Uh, Okay, um, how to make friends in the music industry. I don't have friends. No, nah, people are people are friendly. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. If you find out, let me know though, Moon Knights. Um Keys MIA says, How far do you go with a mixing session? You say you send it out. What do you give the mix engineer? Um uh, oh, okay. You know what? Actually, um, Keys Mia, this session is a good example of what I give to the mixer. Like, this is all of the tracks named and, like, anything that... Oh, my God. Yeah, anything... No, that's not true. Never mind. Oh, wait. That's a send. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so hold on. Let me, make, let me see if I actually did what I was going to say I do. Yeah, okay. So you'll notice on this on this project, um any tracks that don't have a file name or any tracks that don't have a track name, like these four, are gonna be like wait, let me unmute the vocals. So for instance, random vokes. Like I didn't split these tracks up. Cause first of all, I use Cubase, right? So all, a lot of mixing is done in Pro Tools or whatever the mixer wants to use. So I usually send stems, not a session. Since I send stems, I kind of get to choose a little bit what's in there. So like, for instance, random vokes is like this, these things, this, which is like an echo. Right? So like all of these plus, plus, plus. Not to think about you. Not to think little ad Um, or this. Okay. I just put them all together because they're such tiny little things that who cares? Um, every single one of these tracks, though, is a separate stem for the mixer. So everything that has a name is an individual track that I sent to the mixer. So, here's the baseline. Oh, D- Dil Collette, the baseline is Talking Heads. Psycho Killer. It's actually a sample. We wrote the song to it. And then we got, we, 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 uh, David, David Byrne was so graceful as to sometimes, you know, when you interpolate a song or something, like, God forbid you should try to sample ACDC. Because word has it, the guitar player guy does not fuck with splitting publishing. He's like, if you want to use my song, I want 100%. We want 100% of the publishing. Some people do that. Maybe that's, I think that's lame as fuck. (laughs) I'd be honored if anyone wanted to sample my shit. But some people are whatever. Who cares what he thinks or why he thinks that way? I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to sample those songs. Anyways, uh, you know, it was Julia Michaels who was listening to um, Psycho Killer. Hold on, let me double check my fucking facts here. Hold on. Hold on. 
<laughs> Hold on, I'm Googling. I'm just Googling to make sure. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, in this case, we uh, Julia was listening to Psycho Killer because we were like trying to figure out what to write. And, oh, funny enough, I actually have... Is it called BL Sesh? Hold on. BL Sesh. BL1 Sesh? BL1 Sesh. I think this is it. Hold on. I actually have the entire session recorded of writing it. It's Julia eating Cheetos. Wait. Let's see if I can find. Cool. Wow, that was actually a pretty good moment. Anyways, I have most of the session recorded, um, and it's mostly Julia eating Cheetos. But anyway, she was listening to Psycho Killer and played the beginning of it, and we were like, fuck it, let's write to this bass line. So I recorded the bass line in and then changed the, the you know, pitched it up so it goes from down to up. And anyway, so then we reached out to um, the Talking Heads team, and David Byrne was so fucking gracious that's the word I was looking for, gracious. He's like, I want equal split. So that was the, uh, it was a 33% split. And then David came in and asked, we thought he he might take everything. We were like, whatever it takes. You know, we just want to respectfully use uh, this bass line from your awesome song. And dude was so bad. He, I think he even tweeted about it. Like, that's the fucking spirit, man. That's why. That's That's the, like... That's so, that was such a fucking, like, fuck yeah moment. Um, super props. And, like, you know, we should be so lucky that we get to use this fucking awesome bass line. So, anyways, here's, here's the deal about this session. So, I looked at the date, and, it, and I, I made this session, and it's called Bad Liar Darian, because I went to present it to my friend Darian's class at um, Citrus College in Pasadena, I believe, Glendale. Um, and so I named the, the session after him. The date on it is like May 20th, uh, 2018. So I have not opened this session since 2018. So usually I like to go over the song beforehand, <laughs> but cause I, I, you know me, I'm an idiot. I don't remember things. So there's going to be some things that, uh, you know, I'm going to be like, look, I honestly, I don't know where the fuck that came from, but I'm sure as hell going to try so, without further ado, let's go over stuff. Oh my god, there's so many things. I was walking down the street the other Oh, I wonder if fucking YouTube is going to demonetize my shit because of this. Let's mute the vocal for a minute. And the verb. Actually, let's mute all the vocals. Let's get right down to some of my favorite shit about this song already. The ambiance. In back of, okay, first there's, uh, so first of all, it's not a bass sample. I recreated the bass with Trillion. So you can, super chopped, right? And then there's a, okay, there's that. <laughs> okay, but here's the cool thing. Here's what makes it awesome, I think. These little sound effects right here. This is what's in the background the whole time. Right? This noise. Which is a drone. Just a, a tone. And then noise. Okay, but 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 you know? Ambiance. And also, why I really like it. Is because that when it when it finally uh, it's like okay I'll tell you what that's that's influenced by that's and I don't care if I get demonetized but uh, hell good <laughs> hella good okay on this verse this is the thing that the Neptunes blew my mind with this they introduced white noise and I didn't even notice it until they started going 
And I was like, oh my God, there was white noise there. Like I didn't know it was there until they started filtering it. You hear it? And then it filters down. That shit blew my fucking mind. And I was like, you know what? The producer sets the scene, right? The producer establishes what's loud. The producer establishes what's bright. That's pretty neat. I know. So that thought led to like, wait, if I can control the listener's experience, then I can show them something they think is bright and then do something brighter or show them something that I think is wide. They think is wide because they don't have a reference point. I do. And then go wider, you know? It's fucking awesome. So anyways, the ambiance is a big part of this. This shit just rides throughout the whole thing. Because, like in the No Doubt song, like what the Neptunes did, you, it makes, now that, since you've had that noise, the entire beginning of the song, right? It drops out a little bit right here. Which I think is where the vocal comes in, right? Trying to distract myself. Okay. So, and the vocal's printed. Um, so, the thought being that when I t finally take it out, it's going to be noticed. It's going to be like, oh, something happened. Uh, excuse me. Right? Which is right before the uh, hook. And then it's gone. Um, would I share sessions for educational purposes? I'd love to, but I don't think I can legally because I don't own the session, right? I don't own the master. So this is property of the label. So I can't send it out. But sometimes mixed sessions leak and then it's not my fault. So like I'm, I've seen new rules uh, stems uh, and I've seen uh, don't start now stems online and I'm all for it. But legally, I don't think I'm allowed to leak it. I don't know how I would go about doing that. But if I could, fuck yeah. You know me, I, I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm the show. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you everything. I don't care. Um, stems usually leak somewhere in the process of when I send the email to the mix engineer and it goes through the a &Rs and like everyone's on the emails and someone's bound to fucking, I don't know, some assistant in a studio. I don't know. Who cares? Whatever. Okay. Um, okay. So let's go over the drums, I guess. Yeah. Fuck it. Wow. Oh, wait, Joe. Sherm, I want to... Sherm, where is this thing you were talking about real quick? Because I feel like this is the stuff you're talking about. This is all the sound effects of the second verse. Is that what you're talking about? This shit? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Um, is this what you're talking about? I know there's a long delay between the chat room and me asking a question, but yes. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, second verse has a ton of shit in it. See, this is the shit that I don't know where this came from. I don't know where this fill. I have, I have no idea where that's from. No idea. None. What's this shit? Oh yeah, the dot. This song is a is an experiment in restraint. Is a lesson in restraint. That's pretty neat. All right, let's go over this fucking claps. Those are Julia, Justin, and myself doing claps in in Oregon without context. That sounds crazy. <sighs> Ian, I caught your stream. Awesome, Aaron. Fuck yeah. Um, I do use markers, keys. Uh, uh, look, it's on the top. You can you see this? See? I mean, those are the markers I use. All right. Um. Um. Okay. So drums. Why isn't my... Oh, there we go. Let's see. Well, let's see what we got. We got the task cam claps. I'm pretty sure... 
Puck Loop. I don't even know where that comes from. Although I think I just have to find out really quick because I'm super curious. And if it crashes, that's fine too. But I'm pretty sure that comes from... Um, let me just load a random thing. There's a Dr. Rex file of mine called box tap. I'm pretty sure. So like I recorded, okay. So before, um, plugins like, uh, vice and Ableton sampler that can detect transients and, and, and apply it to your keys. The only thing that did that was Dr. Rex and recycle made by propeller heads or reason. So like I recorded myself tapping a box and I've used this file for, I don't know how many years, but there's a lot of like, these are all just, I mean, it's heavily compressed. They're just cool noises, right? Cool noises. And with Dr. Rex, you can like, you can um, adjust the envelope and everything. So I think a lot of these little noises are made from chopped up stuff. Like, for instance, the claps are these. I wonder if you can hear, there's, a, there's actually a really funny part of this, like Justin yelling at me. Sus. Where is it? I'm like, do it again. He goes, no. Never mind. Damn it. I thought I, okay, whatever. Um, so like the claps on Bad Liar are, are these ones. I don't know which, which, which ones exactly, but they're, they're also from Dr. Rex. So yeah. Yeah. What else? Wait, there's playlists on this? Huh. What was the... I don't know what the difference is. Oh, see, like, I'm missing a plugin. Oh, Fab Filters Q2. So this actually doesn't sound like, the, like it does in the song. So I don't have the plugin. Ah, snap. Okay, so that's the hook. Ooh, loud ass bell. With shimmer on it, really? That's pretty neat. Hmm. I don't remember that. I don't remember anything on this song. Shit. Anyways. What verbs am I using? Good fucking question. I don't know. I printed them. Jeez. Oh, well, that was shimmer. Um, snap verb has nothing on it. That's just a sample. I mean, I, I probably printed it. Whoa, 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 what? <gasps> Ooh, this is important. This is important. This was... This was the first time I, I realized you could achieve a weird harmonic effect from doing a brick wall cutoff. Check out what this, what this kick sounds like without this. Right? At a brick wall at 41 hertz. Oh, shit. The fuck? Where'd that come from? It was always there, man. Anyways... So my kick is actually split between, what's the other one doing? Yeah, no brick wall on the other one. So they're both the same sample, just one of them has a brick wall, uh, brick wall EQ. It's like when the Q is at, it's a brick wall, okay? They call, it's called a brick wall. What do you want? Expect me to know what the fuck that means. I don't know how to talk, what? Okay, anyways, so. That's a cool thing to do. I usually use the Q3 nowadays to do that. Like, so, brick, brick wall, 41. Ooh, what's that clicking about? 
Wait, why didn't Isotope do the click? Ooh. Fab Filter, you got some competition. Goodbye. Berkville. What the fuck? You're live again. What do you mean? Of course I am. I know I've been gone, <laughs> but here I am. Ozone 5 is the superior ozone. I will agree with that, man. Um, uh, Joe, the brick wall thing is happening because... I'm pretty sure it's because it's it's like the EQ is trying to make sense of... Um, like, it doesn't necessarily believe in God, but it wants to. So in its decision-making process, you get that. I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. It's like... No one actually knows. <laughs> Why does that happen? No one knows. We're still figuring, figuring it out. No, it has something about um, harmonic. I don't know. Can you show the vocal chop on the second pre-chorus? Yeah, fuck yeah, I can. I don't remember it, but let's do it. Where is it? Pre-chorus, but no, it's actually that Oh, you know what? This is before I discovered this in Cubase, which is you can put your marker track up there. So those aren't out. <laughs> I don't know if anybody actually noticed about that. But a lot of the try-ins too, like that's just for effect. And also, all those are chopped to like rhythmically to make them more intense. You know? Man, I really don't remember a lot of stuff. Um, I don't use vocal line. I think vocal line is the devil. No, I am all for people using vocal line. I just feel like you get phasey artifacts. But I get phasey artifacts when I do it by hand too. So I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Vocal line, I think I'm just salty because <laughs> Cubase never had vocal line. I mean, they have their vocal lineup thing now. But yeah, there might just be some salt. But I like to do it manually just because I, I don't, I don't know, like, you know, time stretch algorithms are great and all, but you don't know what that's doing to your vocal. And, you know, I used to like overly put stuff like in time with itself. And it was Tom Higginson of the Plain White Tees. I was like, dude, leave some room for like nature in there. And I was like, ah, oh, you're right. Um... Ian, when you layer a sub with the bass, is it the same octave or an octave lower? It can be in the same octave. It depends on what frequencies you're... If I'm layering two basses, none of them are going to occupy the same space or a lot of the same space. You know, if I have a, a ba uh, one bass is going to be my high end. Let's see what's on this one. I think this one has some good examples of some bullshit. Oh, yeah, here. Cool. So this one... Oh, my God. It's like... It's like this song was made to answer this question. Um, same in, in Don't Start Now. It, there's two layers to the bass. This is Ascend. So there's the Trillion version of it, which actually, let's look at the low end. I mean, that's not much. Like, the sub is... It's the same octave, but they're not interfering with each other. You know? The Trillion bass is, is, has a lot of the low end taken out of it. Bases, the sub is in there. Wait, can I do that fucking thing? Channel comparison. Trill base. Ah, I never use this. There you go. There you can actually see. This is the sub, the blue one. Trillion base is the orange one. So you see, they're they're not occupying too much of the same space. Oh shit, if I'd flip the phase. Oh no, never mind, that's fine. <laughs> Good job, Ian. Thanks. Okay. Can you play the backing vocals stacked without the leads? Yes. Wait, let me let me go into the Taking the lead out, taking the verbs out. 
about you. Take the ad lib out. Here's the harmonies. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of crazy. <laughs> like it's all made out of melodyne. Um, how do you process doubles? You know that's changed over the years. Right now, I'm on a, I'm on um, DSing the shit out of them so that I can make them louder, um, so that they don't occupy the same sibilance as the lead vocal. So like, I'll leave my lead vocal pretty bright, still being DSed, but then my doubles. I'll DS the fuck out of them so they're like super dark so you get them but you don't get the S's. No, I don't have the Melodyne. Why would I have the Melodyne? It's 2018. Sorry, sorry. I just got emotional right there. Okay. Um, what else? What else? What crossover frequency do you use for electric bass and sub? It's all by ear. Rabbi Dangerous. <laughs> Great name. Um, oh my God. Oh my God, I can't open it. Why do you deny me? Ah. Where's my other, where's my other box? Hold on. I have an emergency. Hold on a second. Oh, you know what? Let's, uh, do a half of one of these. It's Friday. Oh. Um. Um. Okay. What's going on? Um, how much time spent on the Melodyne work? A fuck ton. I think the comp, all the vocals for this took me three days to do. I remember because I used to like be like, oh man, I spent three days on these vocals. Because it was like, I was so, first of all, Adderall, which I don't do anymore. Second of all, it was going to be like, I was so excited that... You got to remember, like, this song was so out there. Like, the fact that, so, like, um, Aaron Bashuk, who was head of Interscope at the time, walked in to the boiler room, which is a studio we wrote this. Is, it's a studio at Interscope, at, in the offices, actually. So you have to, like, walk through the offices to get to it. Um, walked in after we wrote it and was like, this is the single. We were like, are you fucking serious? And Selena fucking loved it. And she's like, I love this song. I want to, like, you know... When when we did the vocal, like she came in, and we we changed a bunch of shit with her, and like she was such a believer in it. And honestly, I thought it was a big risk to take. And you know, I think the song kind of got pulled a little bit early, but um, and also you know, Selena was going through some shit then, some personal stuff, and like that obviously can affect you know how a song is rolled out, etc. So I was just so happy to that, you know, a label and an artist was willing to take such a crazy creative leap and do a song this weird and cool for the, for 2018, you know? Um, <sighs> this man's one of the best where you get denied by a box. Where is that thing? Fucker. Ah, I always do this. It's the, it's the child proofing. Ah, I'm not a child anymore. Wait, no, I can't now. Okay. Sorry, I'm irresponsible. All right. Okay, what the fuck are we doing? Okay. Um, do you lean towards multiband distortion on the bass track or rather have multiple tracks from working? Well, I go multiple tracks. Multiband, I don't know what I'm doing. You know. Um, okay. Let me see if there's any more interesting shit to this. Let me know, let me know what other parts you want to see in the song or what, what, what things you want to see. Um. Oh, these are Ben Rice's effects. Ben Rice is her vo vo uh, vocal producer. He, he sent me these with the stems of the vocals. He did this like. Awesome shit. Sorry, that's the tambourine click. He used her breath for rhythm. Pretty 
printed effects throw. Ooh, the noise. I don't know why that's like that. Okay. Sassy Strassy, you're so sweet. Um, I I want to stream more, but I I say it I say it all the time. I'm I'm a I'm what do I say? <laughs> I'm a producer that streams. I'm not a streaming producer. <laughs> like, people like Kenny Beats fucking do this and then also do songs outside. And, like, I don't know how he does it. The guy's, like, a workaholic. I don't know. I don't know how he does it. I can't seem to balance the uh, uh, the workload. Um, and also, you know, I wish I could stream fucking... I'd stream 24-7 if, if I could. But I can't stream, obviously, songs that I'm working on. Like, and I'm working on some stuff at the, I'm working on a lot of stuff at the moment. That's why I haven't been here in a couple weeks, which I appreciate y'all's patience. Um, all right, Joe asked for the ambient bendy guitar stuff, please. I don't even know what you're talking about, Joe, but okay. Bendy guitar stuff. I wonder if. Oh, it's some of my favorite shit right here, though. I love, I love this shit. Second, pre <laughs> excuse me, second pre chorus. <laughs> These are great. <laughs> Those are like the only chords. Like I was struggling for a while. I remember like trying to find out what the fuck chords to play <laughs> that didn't like fuck the vibe up. And that was, I think, all I came up with. I don't know if there's any other chords in the song. Are there? Ooh, are you gonna feel stupid? There's no, I'm pretty. Springy. I'm pretty sure there's not that many chords in this song. I mean, save the uh, harmonies that are made in Melodyne, but I think these are the only chords. I think that's the bendy thing you're hearing. Which... It's gotta be some synth with verb on it, I have no idea. This is some bullshit. That's a hey. Hey sample. Ooh, that bass! How did I get that shit? Damn, that sounds nice. Oh! Little, little 808s. So, think about how fucking... <gasps> Ian, did you do it? Oh, come on. I didn't sidechain that. Wow, amateur. That's a lot of interference. Like, if, if this was me today, I would have done this. Let's put another C2, and I would have side-chained, you know what I'm going to do, bass sub to the uh, pulsing thing, because, man, that's, I'm sure um, Manny, m m I'm sure Manny, Manny handled this, by the way, when, when he mixed it, because... I probably would have done that, so that it avoided the, uh... It avoided crossing paths with the other bass. Right? So you can hear the side chain effect. I would have done that. But 2018, Ian apparently didn't think that was important. What a chump, dude. What a fucking. Just gonna let your bass frequencies interfere like that? <laughs> fucking amateur. Wow. Embarrassing. All right. What is that shit? I don't remember that. What the fuck is that noise? Where is it? Hold on a second. What the fuck is this shit? I... Fuck is this from? Oh, that's gotta be Rex. 
Ah. Oh, I know what it is. I know what that is. Okay, that's gotta be... Wait, let's see. Why am I burping so much today? Let's see if I can identify the source of that. I just need something with Dr. Rex. Is it cell? Cell one? Is it this one? No. No, but it sounds like a vocal chopped up in Rex. So, like, Dr. Rex, so probably like something like that or something, you know? I think. With a bit crusher and super uh, distorted. But this sounds stretched. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. Am I working with Sigrid? Not at the moment. Ew, what did you eat? Um, caprese salad. Um, a bean. And some chicken. All right, are we? Are, I think we're good with this song. There's, there's really like this is a very minimal production. I mean, look at this thing. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. All the drums are literally here. That's not okay. All the drums are all here on screen. The bass is literally. One bit. This is a. This track is a send. Ignore that. Why do I have? Ooh, an even lower octave. Why did I do that? I don't know why I did that. I don't know if that's even needed, but maybe I. Ask twenty eighteen, idiot Ian. So the bass is just that. A lot of where I scratched my itch, so to speak, production wise, is in all the weird background effects and, and, you know, I spent a lot of time on that since the song just didn't need a lot. And even like right before we sent it to mix, I remember I was in Las Vegas at a songwriting camp that Warner Chapel had put on and Bayshuck was there and we went up to my hotel room, completely shit-faced, mind you. And I, I had them bring like speakers into my room so we could like, cause we had to send this off to mix and it was like, wait, we needed like a, a you know, we couldn't use the studios cause they were being used for the camp. Anyways, we completely trashed went over the song and I was like, should I add this? And he was like, no, take it out, take that out, take it out, take it out, take it out. Like he was like, so like, I don't know. He, he did a lot for the last bit of the song. Aaron Bayshark did. He, he, I think he helped me. He helped me not get in my own way in terms of thinking there wasn't enough done. Like he reminded me that the song itself had legs to stand on. You know what I mean? Which was great. That's why Aaron Bayshark is who the fuck he is. He's great. Um, all right. So. Oh, did it come out in 2017? Shit. Oh, I guess I only went over this session. Oh, yeah, I only made this classroom session in 2018. Hmm. 2017. Nice. That makes me feel a little older. Um, is there anything cool? I... Yeah. I guess that's pretty much it for this song. Oh, yeah, there's probably Julia in here. Is there Julia in here? I don't know, actually. There actually might not be Julia in here. All the harmonies are Melodyne made. I love that part. See how I, I fucking boosted the volume on that bitch. <laughs> this little guy right here. <laughs> I was like, notice that! <laughs> Anyways, um, cool, so... Oh, the chord pad. Damn. 
Let me see. Fuck, I have no. Oh, wait, you know what? That could be. Hold on. I was big on reason in 2017. That could be, uh, what's it called? Fucking something fucked up sign. Might have been this guy. But without the vocoder, which caused that little crackling. And I guess I probably faded it like... Sine wave. I love what the Reason vocoder does to sine waves. Oh, it's off screen, sorry. Listen to what, listen to the crackling. Look, I'm going to take it off bypass, listen to this. Hear that weird crackling? How cool is that? What a cool side effect, huh? It's a harmonic equalizer. It's it's an equalizer that's just doing har harmonics or something like that. I don't know. Frequency bands. I love that shit. What a sound. movie music but maybe that would oh shit what's the new rules part <laughs> I don't remember but this is a new rule synth um okay <laughs> this just turns into go over presets <laughs> let's try and knock out tuck That's a baddie right there. And you can see everything that's being used to make this sound, by the way. If you, I guess if you screenshot this. Nice chord. I love these presets. These are all combinator presets I made. And you can see how they're made by just looking at them. You can tell it's... What, what's the thing from the nature walks? You can tell it's pine because of the way it is. <laughs> Everybody didn't like what the fuck is he talking about? All right, let's uh What time is it? Let's fucking get into I don't know. Play around time. Let's do let's play around with reason. Don't save. Um Oh, creme brulee, I'm sorry. Creme brulee, not creme brulee. Excuse me for assuming the R. Um, reason is well worth it, man. I love reason. God, I just, I, I don't want to get too emotional, but reason is, I almost got, I shit you not. I shit you not. I almost got a reason tattoo. I shit you not. I'm glad I didn't because they changed their logo. That would have been bad. Um, yeah, don't get. Software tattoos. <laughs> um, Cubase tattoo, man. If there, if I was gonna get a tattoo, I think it'd be a Cubase tattoo at this point. But sh can't deny the impact that. I mean, Reason was like Reason was like the first. My friend Kenny, when I went to UC Santa Cruz, you guys forget I'm 38 years old. Like, I was pr making shitty beats in my dorm room in 2001. And with you know what program I was using? Reason. Or maybe 2002. It was like Reason 2.0. It was literally just come out. It was like this new thing. I don't know what version it was, but it had just come out. And it was like Dr. Rex was the craziest thing ever. And I, and I had to, obviously I got it pirated. And I, yo, are you freezing? What, why did that take so long? Okay, um, I went to UC Santa Cruz and I was at College 8. Now, 
mind you, the colleges, if you're from Santa Cruz or you know anything about the colleges, what they are changes over the years from, from what I've heard. Like, I don't know what College 8's like now, but, um, oh, College 8. So, Sassy Strassy, what was College 8? Or what is College 8 now? I don't know what year. Yeah, College 8. You know what? College 8 was bros. It was still bros when I was there. My, like, I remember thinking that. Stevenson. Oh, Stevenson was chill. I used to hang out at Porter a lot because there was a pool table there and I used to hustle bitches. Yeah, I play pool. What? Want to play? <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> Let's go through presets and make something. Breathy 80s mono. Okay. Where is the MIDI? <laughs> Steve. <laughs> These sounds are great. Man, I'm telling you, man, reason, people sleep on reason. What a great sound. Let's keep going. I don't even know what I'm doing at this point, honestly. If you, if you really want to recreate these sounds, all the information you need is right here. So I'm literally just handing my presets over. What? Okay. Wait, do I need to check? 131 viewers? <gasps> How's the audio? 131 viewers? <gasps> How's the audio? 131 viewers? 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 How's the audio? Just kidding. That's a lot of people. Maybe the Europeans do carry some weight. <laughs> happened to the oh I remember how to use you crazy kit let's try out crazy kit I'm waiting for something to inspire man the fuck the fuck what Oh, there we go. The fuck? This isn't it. Hold on, I screwed it up. Hold on. The fuck? This is a crazy kid. Cool.cmb. Cool. I have no idea. Um, beef.cmb. Okay. Fresh eyes.cmb. Let's see. Is use for... I have no idea. Holy shit. Oh, no. I know what that one is. That one's fucking annoying. All right. Okay. No, holy shit is this. Like, you don't want this. Great for combining with chords. All right, let's 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 actually... Uh, wait, do I have anything? Do I have anything started? Wait, does anyone... Um, does Reason Rack sound that good, or is it the samples you loaded? Actually, a lot of it aren't samples. It's, it's A lot of it come from Maelstrom, which is this thing. And you can see the effects on it. Let's see Julia thing. That's probably her voice, Rex. So without any of the effects, the effects in Reason are pretty fun, man. 
That's without the effects. So it's pitched down. With reverb. Unison. Pulverizer, which is an insane compressor. Stereo imager to take it back to almost mono. And then Scream 4 to compress the fuck out of it. So let's put like that box tap one. That's pretty hard. That's a cardboard box I tapped like seven years ago. I don't know what I'm doing, but whatever. Fuck it, man. What was that little guy? Okay. Ooh, that shit is... What? What is this little ghost note right here? Okay. You know what? Hold on a second. Let's do some. Oh, the polyphony's already on too. Interesting. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Duplicate. I'm duplicating it because I want to go back into Reason and just do a bunch of shit with Reason. And you know what? I'm going to group all these together. I'm... Call it Ducky. But I want to, for some reason... Why do I want to put Devil Lock on it? I don't know why. I just want to compress the shit out of all of this. Like, everything. I don't know why. Just let me... Why did I think to do that? I don't know. Anyways, let's keep going. Let's do... Let's load another thing in there, like uh, task cam noises. This is just shit I recorded in my kitchen. Tapping it and stuff. What the fuck is going on here? Hold on a second. I gotta figure this out. Oh, wait, I gotta put the key. Keyboard. I got had this this guitar player play on um, "Back to You" for Selena, and I double timed it and then put it into Recycle. So I had all these. I just had them solo to the song, so now I have all these like little bits of solo. Okay.
What a sound. Sounds like a kick. Interesting. Oh, wait. Sounds so tribal. Cool. Oh, you know what else you could do to this? If I put, um, let's save this because I love to crash shit um what's it called torque torque and let's put saturn on it because why the fuck not what a fuck not Weird sounds, man. You know I want to tighten this up a little bit. Actually, you know, this would be the thing to put torque on. Something else up. What do we do? This is double time guitar. Okay, so this is uh, me hitting like a piece of metal. Slow down. Wait, but there is something else going on here. What is going on? Something weird is happening. What is that? What is, what is? Whoa, these sounds. Interesting sound. I want the beginning of this part and this only. Just for background noise. Render. All right. This is just bullshit. I want to put that in back for inspiration. Or wait, can we not?
No, fuck it. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to... Uh, uh, pick pick the next patch <laughs> um, in the chat room. Can you see these names? Pick one if you can actually read it. And I'll use it. Unless it sucks. <laughs> Selena so one pre. Oh, Thor two got it first. Nice, Thor two sick. Boom. Whoa. Wait a minute. Just fucking hold on. Get rid of this shit. Get out of here. Sound is not as cool as I remember it. Thor thing pluck. What's this guy like? Oh, maybe this is the one I thought of. Oh, wait. Listen to one of these. One of these has like an ending that's insane. Like the way it distorts. Maybe it's this one. Oh, yeah. Listen. Listen. Fucking weird, isn't it? Wow. It's like some alien ship. So weird. But I think that's kind of a vibe. Wait, what was I trying to do? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Food and beans. Um. I do something, Phil. Fuck it, let's turn auto gain on. Fuck it.
how the fuck I'm doing? Why is everything so... Oh, it's because... Never mind. Dude, it's like the whole world is cool. I don't know what to do with it, though. It's kind of like all this, all the stars. Him, but I love it. God damn that that shit sounds crazy on the end right there. <laughs> okay, Thor. <laughs> Relax. Um not sure what we're building, but I'm here for it. Let's not quantize you 100%. Whatever, let me just print that because it's weird. What, I don't know what we're doing. Let's look. What's up in the chat? Uh, um, so, Midi, in this economy, what are you? Don't be so sensational. Uh, um, all right, let's do some Q&A stuff. How did I print that? I printed it with uh, the print command. Command print. You know? This shit is weird, man. You know? Whatever. Um, oh, wait, who the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have a lot of text to attend to. Oh. Um... Have you ever used Reaper? No, I haven't. Is the Reason plugin a game changer for you? Yes, absolutely. It was it was nuts. I think I posted some weird story on my Instagram when it finally became a VST instrument. I was like, this is the beginning of a new era. 
Um, <clears throat> famous people I've met this week? Well, I don't know. Just like... <laughs> Nobody, nobody. Um, uh, all right. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to, um, very top lineable, if anyone wants, wants to top line it. It's kind of a shitty loop, but you know, there you go. Send it to me. Um, do I ever sit down and make a three minute song? Yes, but this is actually most of what I can stream is like the idea starters, but I don't really, uh, I don't really, I can't really like <sighs> make a song. Like, I don't know. I just, I mean, I guess I could do that. I could do that. It'd probably be a good exercise for me to do that. Do I want to do that? I have enough songs to worry about that I can't stream. This is like, to, to me, the streaming thing is so fun because I get to talk to you, obviously. And two, because I just get to fuck around and like plant a lot of seeds for ideas and like techniques that maybe I'll use later, you know? Like, I'll come back to, to things and stuff. <laughs> um, have I turned an idea in a live stream into a song? Yes. How neat is that? It is. Um, I have, but it'll only, that'll only come, uh, come to light when the song gets, if the song gets released. So, <laughs> um, once a song is released, the label owns the stems. Um, when are you, what are you? <laughs> um, uh, how are you, Ian? Oh, you're so nice. I'm all right, man. I'm all right. Uh, you know. Um, I'm good. I'm keeping it, keeping it together. I'm working out a lot, which is keeping me sane. And I stopped taking Adderall. Now, uh, fuck, it's been like four months now and I fucking feel so much better. Ugh, that shit. Not, not saying you shouldn't take Adderall. I'm just saying like some people, the price is higher mentally. And for me, it was doing great things, but man, it was fucking with my emotions. Ah, you could, you know, um, is not, is it not, I don't know. Is it not worrying if you don't know whether a song is going to get cut or not? Um, honestly, bro, or girl, um, honestly, my guy, <laughs> it's, it's, I have so many fucking, like, things at the, on, like, I, I throw so much shit at the wall that I'm, I, I don't care anymore. But this is me answering now. Five, five years ago, it would have been like, yeah, it fucking breaks my heart. Ten years ago, it would have been like, it means everything. <laughs> so now I don't care. But, like, you're listening to a jaded fucking guy who's been doing it for over a decade. And, you know, not, you know ever since the Q&A we did on the Discord with Emily and Caroline, uh, when, when she was gi Emily was giving advice about some shit, and I noticed, like, the way she answered the question was very applicable to where she was in her career currently, you know, like 10 years deep, multiple hits, fucking all this experience and knowledge. And, you know, she'd be like, ah, oh, I don't care, you know, whatever, whatever. And it made me think, I'm like, dude, 10 years ago, she would not have answered the question that way. And like, if you want to know the mentality that she had when, when, when she was like where most starting uh, up and coming songwriters are at, <laughs> that's not an accurate answer. So now every time people ask me a question, I have to like double check whether I would have answered it differently five years ago, 10 years ago, you know, like it, it, it's, um, it's, it's funny. And it's something that I don't think maybe, maybe enough. I don't think that's thought about that much. Like when you're asking producers for advice outside of like, you know, literal plug-in examples, uh, I mean, even those change with time, right? But like whenever you're asking someone like me who's just been doing this longer than you, in, in most cases, honestly, like, you know, I, I have to make sure that I, I actually answer the question constructively and not just being like, you know, what do you, what do you say when an artist doesn't cut your song? I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I got hits, dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, that's not a good answer. It's like, 
I don't know, like I used to get really hurt about it, but that was not sustainable, <laughs> you know, because like I for a long time tied my self-worth. <laughs> my self-worth was tied to my work and that was not sustainable because rejection was so unstopped just all the fucking time that like I, I was just like, dude, I have to compartmentalize. So uh, that is actually good advice for any state. The, the better you can train yourself to, you know, not completely fucking be it, it helps to not be precious with 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 your creations you know i know they're your they're babies free. and you made them and everything's special and all but like if you're gonna make music that you're trying to sell to like an artist and to the and then eventually to the public then like you know you're gonna get there's gonna unless you're just some fucking superstar there's gonna be rejection so i don't know anywho uh I read Stevie Wonder had something like 250 tracks done for songs in the key. Yeah, I mean, I've probably done uh, Roadblock too. I, with respect to what you're saying, um, yeah, not everything is going to be. It's it's that's exactly it. You're exactly right, Roadblock. And like for instance, on you know, I, mean, I am still working on on the Lizzo project, and we've probably done 23 songs at this point, and I think three of them are going to end up being on the record. Like, sh you know, that's just how it is. And, and of course, there's some that I love that I wish had been finished, but pff, fuck it, man. What are you going to do? You know? How did I get noticed? Um, again, this is like 10 years ago, but I, 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 I we, we, my studio was producing a lot of local bands and eventually we started producing bands on like small record labels and then my name started getting out as like a producer for like rock bands during like warp tour days. I this I have I have trouble with this how do you get noticed thing or like how to find a manager today because I don't feel like I have the good advice. Like I know just because of the fact that people send me tons of music, like I don't have time to listen to everything that everyone sends me. So I would say like reach out on Instagram and shit and but honestly, I think uh, the way that I find out about great producers is usually I hear through an a and guy who is like a hawk on fucking SoundCloud or something, you know, or like it, it. it's, I think you, you have to garner like some public interest, even if you're a producer, you know, and like you're in your work before someone will like, you know, cause if I, if, if I go to a page and someone has 10,000 followers, I'm like, oh, there, they look like they might be doing some shit or something, you know, like. Uh, it's it's more incentive to even get your shit listened to, you know, if you're already like kind of have a, a, not a brand, I don't want to say that, but you know, if you're already like giving, if you're already giving people a reason to care, ha ha, how about that? <laughs> um, what was it like hearing your production on the radio for the first time? Um, that was a good feeling. It, I, I, I really, I don't listen, I, I couldn't, I didn't like it because it sounded so compressed, but I was just happy hearing it. Got lazy to rather, man. I don't have to work on this part of that part. Yeah, all the time. Q Q Q Ocean Quotion asks, "Do you ever feel lazy at parts of the production? Like I don't want to." Yes, all the fucking time. There's like things that I don't look forward to doing. Like I'm working on this Charlie XCX song right now, where I just like when we wrote it, I threw in this drum loop, and like some of the snares with like the programming snares I put underneath it or phase clashing, you know, and the loop was so long. And then when I was making the song, I copied different parts of the loop all over the place. And I was like, fuck. And I had to go through the entire song and like read, like basically I fixed all the phase problems with the loop. And then I had to recopy that bit of the loop over every single part in the song in every different variation so that the snares wouldn't uh, hit out of phase. I want my snares to fucking pop every time. I don't need that bullshit. Even though that 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 is arguably something that might not matter. People might not matter. Like no one noticed it in the demo. Charlie doesn't give a fuck because the song is it, the song still rocks. So, but that's like the shit that I is it's like the OCD in me that I have to go do it because I know I have to fucking do it. And if I don't, I'm gonna hear it every time. And I don't want to talk about it. So, um, yeah. Uh, the Jax Brew asks, what are your most important tips on recording? Recording what? <laughs> um, I don't get a good signal. 
Um, let's go on. Might Karen be like <laughs> Marshall Holland? Might Karen be like? Here are some Celo green stems. Make a beat over it. Yo, that's that's. I cut my teeth like that. Uh, Mike Karen would send me fucking uh, a part of part of like for for a couple of years at least. He would send me Jason Derulo acapellas and be like, reproduce this. <laughs> that was like, you know what? It's funny. I should talk about that more, but I don't because I forget all my failures because all of them were failures. I literally would send Mike Karen beats. I would go. To, I would go. I would go. I fucking love Mike. I would go to his office and <laughs> I'd play him tracks, and like he would listen. And then, like, the track would end, and he just wouldn't say anything. <laughs> I was just sitting there like, so I got that one. Um, okay, and I also have this <laughs> no emotion. <laughs> like, not a, like, eh. And then when he liked something, that would be like, that's cool. Send me that. And I'd be like, oh, fucking yes. Yes. <laughs> but, like, all the, all the acapella stuff he sent me, I never, I always... I did too much. I did too much. I never nailed it with that because nothing ever came out of those. But, you know, uh, you know, shout out Mike Karen for he, he, you know, believed in me <laughs> a lot earlier than I think most anyone believed in me. Mike Karen was like, you, there's something to you. Like he would give me chance after chance and like, I'd get close, but you know, he'd hit me up like a month later and I'd be like, oh, thank God I didn't fuck up that relationship. Or, you know, like I... That was a, uh, that dude knows what he's doing. Um, but that, that was also, he was a big part in teaching me, you know, mind you also, Mike Karen was, uh, him and his a at the time, Miles Beard were the first ones to call Want to Want Me as a hit. They were like, this is a hit. This is a hit record. I think it was Miles on the emails, like, let's make this the number one that I know it is or something like that. And Mike Karen actually like, hit me directly and was like, you should change these chords in the chorus. You should change this. You should change that. And he turned the song into a hit. <laughs> like it was like, it was close, but he fucking made it like, I don't know. He, he took it over the edge. So shout out Mike Karen. I love you. Um, all right. What else? What else? What else? Okay. Um, Ian, have you tried some PC music? PCP is a strong... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yes. I haven't tried to make it. But I did have um, a session once with uh, AG Cook. And I was very intimidated because he's so talented. But like, you know, like that kind of creative where you're like, I will never be that good. Like, I just know I won't. Like, he emits that kind of vibe and it's really intimidating. Super nice guy. Um... Uh, well, M Marshall, when you say, uh, Marshall said that that's Mike's Karen, my Karen's, Karen's go-to move with producers. It is a great way to like test, you know, like it's if, if, and when I get to a point where I'm signing producers, that's one of the, like, I'm going to steal that method from Mike Karen because he, he'll send the same acapella out to probably 20 different, you know, young, hungry producers that he thinks have some potential and like, you know, uh, most of them will be shit, but he'll be able to be like, ah, I'm going to pay more attention to this guy. Or oh, this is like, it's really smart. If you think about it, it's really smart. Mike's a very fucking smart guy. Um, all right. How do you, how do you know when to abandon an idea or when to push through for the magic? Pro theorem asks, um, that's a fucking good question, man. I, uh, you know, I'm trying to honestly answer that question. Like this thing we started on the, the the stream, like I would abandon this. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't give it much thought. Cause it's like but you gotta understand, like that answer has qualifier qualifiers. There's conditions though. Like me, I'm thinking about what projects I'm currently working on, you know, like I'm thinking about maybe Dua or I'm thinking about Selena or Lizzo or something. And I'm like, eh, if it doesn't really apply to any of those, I don't really think about it. You know, like if, if, if I was like, you know, like working with Kanye, I wish or something, then maybe I would be more like into like, oh, you know, I should pr pursue this like little weird angle. Cause like, this might be something 
you know, Kanye would fuck with. But, uh, you know, if I'm not, I, mean, I don't even know if that's a very good way of thinking, but that's how I operate now just because, you know, I like to have an idea for, uh, uh, you know, where I'm going. <laughs> and, you know, most of what I do on the streams doesn't. So it's like, it's very hit or miss. All right. Um, but but look, uh, you, but also, you know, if you listen to something fresh, I'll tell you when I do move and when I push, I, I don't know if I push through, if I push through in the moment, I think I'll leave things for deciding later. And if I listen to it with fresh ears, that's when I'll make the decision whether to push through or not. So I wouldn't, I don't beat, oh, you know, I'm not going to beat it to death in the moment because maybe I've lost objectivity or something like that, you know? Um, all right. Oh my God. The Jax Brew coming through with these questions, bro. Let's say you started your career all over again. Now, with all the information that you know, what would you focus on? And what would your career path if... The, whoa. Um, if I had all the knowledge I had now... That's a that's really good... That is a neat question. Um, I would probably hunker down for a few months and just make a shit ton of music. And then I would... Well, if I had all the information, okay, I mean, you know, here's me being like, well, technically, if I had all the information, I would know the phone number of blah, blah. No, I would, I would, uh, I would like hit up a, a bunch of fucking ARs and ARs assistants and probably just send them like my tracks. I would hit up, you know, Mike Karen and all his minions and just send them my tracks and just get everyone's attention. And then if, again, if I had all the fuck, if I could do what I could do today, then yeah, I'd make a bunch of tracks and I would be, I'd act like hot shit. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't do that. I would, I would like, and then I would make people compete over me. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, honestly, I would, I would know here. The most important thing is I would know that like, uh, I'm, I'm starting in a fucking sea of a million beat makers and shit. So uh, maybe I would look for writers to write songs with. Fuck. I don't know. I would just definitely. I, this is such a hard question. Fuck you, Jax. Fuck you. <laughs> In a nice way. <laughs> Fuck you nicely. But that's a tough fucking question. I don't know. Look, like, if I had information when I started, obviously, I would probably have gotten. Like, my career started pretty much when I was 31, you know? That was when I had my first song on the radio. Like, and I was from 25 until then was like fucking just recording shitty bands. But like there wasn't, I can't tell you, like I, I set out on this journey to do what I'm doing. Like I never say like I wanted to do music, like, music wanted to do me and it did me, you know, like I was just something that I got more and more busy recording bands and just doing little shit on the computer. And then, oh, all of a sudden you have a career, you know, it's like, uh, I don't, I don't have the say and, and like, you know, and it took a long fucking time. A long time. And it's just time was so different back in like 2007 and 8, like when I was recording shitty bands and stuff. Like this is a long time ago. So I have a lot of problem with that question because I want to fucking, you know, I'm not a, I'm not fool enough to apply the confidence I have in my production to like other areas in life and other areas of music, <laughs> which is like networking and shit. Dude, I don't know. Like my manager could answer that question. All right. I'm sorry for... uh going off on a tangent there. Um, can you show the stage of an idea when you feel like it's good enough to submit to an A&R or pitch it to whomever? Yeah, I can show you. I can show you... Um, where's my fucking bounce? Hold on. I have a... I have this folder. These are these are all starts, and I've and I've played these before on the stream. These are all starts that I play in the studio sometime. No, that's from a stream. Yeah, these a lot of these suck. Nope, I wouldn't play that one. Mm, love that one. Like, yeah. So th these are just tracks that I play in sessions. Like, if any of this inspires you, you know, they're all like... This is, they're just bullshit. They're like production models. This one never gets any attention. <laughs> Most of these have never been used. It's never been used. Oh, but I love these drums. Listen to these drums. These drums are fucking... 
fire. Woo! Anyways, uh, you know, they, they go from like a, a more drawn out thing to, let's see, like the smallest file. What's uh? Take. Take. I'll mix. I'll mix back down a loop like a drum beat and be like, oh, you know, I was fucking with these drums. Want to do some chords to it or something? You know, like that's what I'm pitching in the room when I write songs. Uh, but a demo for a song, like, let me see, what's a good. Oh, I can't. I don't know what I can play right now. Anyways, next question. <laughs> sorry. I, I, sorry. I'll find a, a, a demo of a song somewhere that I can play. Um, all right. Uh, creme, creme brulee. By the way, I have a good way to think about all those starts you have. Okay. I, have, I, I swear to God, I think, I think I found the mental gymnastics to feel better about your million unfinished ideas. Okay. And I've used this a million times with like songwriting analogies and, and shit. But uh, think of like the good ideas. Like, okay, so you have this like huge, <laughs> you have this huge pipe full of shit and you just got to get all, there's little diamonds in there, good ideas. You just got to get all the shit out. And all those little starts are just the, they're just the, the shit that needs to come out in order to get to the good idea. How about that? Right? So instead of looking at all your, starts and stops like this fucking bullshit from today you know instead of me feeling like what did i just spend all my time doing i'm gonna think you know what i did that and it's gonna register in my subconscious and like oh remember that one fucking like ah oh, you know what was that one little like ringy sound oh i remember that that was cool you know and then i'll go take it so like it's they all serve a purpose it, they're what you make of them okay i'm not lying here where's the lie because <laughs> You choose what to define, define, how to define your starts, okay? And that's how I define my starts. They are the shit that I need to get out to get to the good stuff. <laughs> or else you get backed up, you know? And trust me, I know a thing or two about being backed up. I got, I got. All right, what else? What's the difference between creating a, quote, banger and creating a hit? feel like most can make something that bangs, but what's the crossover? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, the crossover is the songwriting, dude. A track is a track. I mean, as cool as producers are, uh, obviously, I listen, production plays a role, of course. Sometimes it's all production, like EDM is all production and not so much songwriting, but like when it comes to a hit song, because hit songs are songs that are songs written over Music, you know, like whatever is a hit, considered a hit. There are hit EDM songs, but I'm just saying, for the sake of discussion, we're talking about top 40 songs. The crossover moment is the top line, is is the actual songwriting. And obviously the way it interacts with the production, but that's the answer to that question, I think. <sighs> Do you write daily a daily schedule? Um, yes, every single day. And I hardly ever complete it. Um... All right. As a producer, do you think it's better to have a lane or be diverse? I I like being diverse. I think it I think it's cooler. I mean, that's just me though. I want to be a jack of all trades. Uh Click track. What are you talking about? What article? I hope I wasn't being a dick cuz if I was, fuck me. Did you read the article at all? What article? Do you think crappy songs can become amazing with production or do they have to be amazing already? Uh, Paolo Moda. Pa Paolo Moda, 900. Um, I, it could have the best production in the world. I, okay, this is my answer, my, my opinion. It could have the best production in the world and if the fucking lyrics are stupid, I cannot enjoy the song. I can't. Like, there's some great EDM songs from producers and EDM artists that I fucking love and know personally that when the singer starts singing and it's just some bullshit ass, like bullshit ass top line, I'm just like, oh, oh, fuck you. I love it. It's great. This is great. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh my God. 
No, this is, dude, fuck yeah, man. Hell yeah, this is going to be great. Fucking stupidest shit I've ever heard. Um, anywho. Mm. Oh, it's, oh, okay, no, never mind. All right, uh, explain WAP then. Terrible song, but somehow it was a hit. I don't think WAP was a terrible song. That shit banged. And there you have it. There's your answer. <laughs> it's because well, uh, what a hit is, is subjective and more people like it than don't. <laughs> so that's what happened. But there are, you know, and maybe that's a song you hate. And there are songs that I don't like that became hits. And I'm like, dude, you know, I, I guess I don't like that song. But then, you know, I remember when I when I first heard Sorry Not Sorry, I, I didn't like it. And then I was walking around all fucking day just saying, baby, I'm sorry. I'm like, shit, that hook is good. Oh, man, I like it. Damn it. Like, I I, I don't know, man. It's, it's an earworm, you know? Like, sometimes you can't explain. Sometimes you can't explain. That's why it's so fun to make pop music is because you literally have no fucking idea. You don't know. I mean, I don't know. Um, all right. Should people move to industry centers to further their career? LA, Miami, et cetera. Ooh, that's a big question, man. I mean, you're kind of, I feel sometimes like I'm trapped in LA because a lot of the writing happens here. So I think it certainly helps to be closer to the people, you know, it helps, but uh, I don't know. Oh, click track. I said less profitable article about how music will sound. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. Spotify is a fucking dude. Fuck Spotify punk asses i can you believe they had the nerve to do the secret genius shit can you believe it a lot of like like what you like like let me just fluff you <laughs> here here's a little trophy and i fuck i we all fell for that shit and then they like i don't know i feel like they pledged to pay songwriters more and then kind of were like oh never mind i don't know i don't know i just i don't it's so fucked up how little i'm not gonna say any more on it okay because obviously you know my opinion but Fucking pay songwriters, dude. Fuck. Like, stop with the nonsense. Like, what justification? What bullshit? Like, fuck off, man. You know, great app. Like, great service. But just fucking don't be a dick about it. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I don't, I, again, I'm not really, I'm not the most educated person, like, when it comes to this stuff. Like, I, and that's my own shortcoming. Like, I, I should be more I should, you know, we, thank God, thank God for the Ross Golans of the world. Thank God for people like Ross Golan who fight for us. Because if it was up to, it was a, a bunch of dumbasses like me, I'd just be like, you know, fuck Spotify and just, you know, do my little stream and fucking open Spotify and listen to a song. You know, it's like, I. Uh, but, anyways, pay songwriters, fucking assholes. The fuck's wrong with you? Secret genius, my get the fuck off with that bullshit. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? How fucking dare you? I fell for that shit though. I did. I fell for it. All right, let's move on. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of fucked up that like I have an opinion, but I'm actually like, would they really not maybe put a song of mine on a playlist? Nah, fuck that shit. I mean, <laughs> you want to start beef with the artist? Fine. Anyways. You're saying too much, Ian. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Where's the lie, though? All right. <clears throat> Let's go down to some more questions. Let's see. Yeah, switch to Apple Music. <laughs> um, all right. Um, <clears throat> I, Apple Apple Music is better. They, they have a, a better royalty rate for songwriters. Apple Music does. I think they're the only ones that I think they pay the most for people putting their music on there. Um, click track. I apologize for saying some stupid ass comment on your article. I was totally being a little bitch troll. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I sincerely apologize. Um, you know, I'm going to give title a try. I'm, I'm, I'm I want to see what the lossless audio is about. Um, Oh, wait, hold on. Not a question. Just saying that you've inspired me to take my song and approach more seriously and keep learning. Oh, <gasps> ah! Jay Bart. 
that is the nicest. That that comes right after my my parents telling me they love me. This is your comment. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I'm so happy that that I'm so happy you're taking it more seriously. Because what the fuck were you doing before? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that's fucking awesome. Sincerely, <laughs> I ruined that moment. I was I'm actually sincerely touched. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, guy can't take a compliment or whatever. Um, all right. Do you consciously think? Oh, I like this question. Do you consciously think about the way trends are going in top forty and try to align in those in some way, or just rock out because it's your taste anyway? What's up, Leon? Great question, man. And perfect example of I would give you a different answer at different points in my career. Right now, right now, I'm on my fucking like. You know, oh, um, I'm me and Kirkpatrick. I made a few hits over here, so I know what I know what's good. Not five years five years ago, I'd been like, dude, I don't fucking know, man. Like, you know, I just I want to like take my inspiration, my influences, like electronic music, and like I kind of want to like I'm constantly paying attention to what's on the radio, and 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 uh, you know, I want to combine those two. And like ten years ago, I would have been like, yeah, I probably just try to like keep up with what's happening on the radio and do that so but the thing that uh gian gian stone a uh, good friend of mine changed my life one day when he uh i told the story before but i'll just say it again really quick because it's a really great he he made a, a huge impact on my life with with literally one fucking sentence uh, it was uh we did like a week of writing it was uh, sam martin um, Sean Douglas, Jason Evigan, myself, and um, Explicit was there. Uh, Esquerdo or uh, um, Anthony. I don't know. How you, I don't. I don't. What, I don't know. If, I don't know his last name. Whatever. Uh, we had a bunch of writers. Whatever. We didn't get shit for the whole week. We were so pissed. We were like, man, everything sucks. We couldn't fucking settle an idea. This is like right after Want to Want Me happened. So Sam and I were like, we know what we know what a hit is now. And like Evigan was starting to have like some success and. Uh, you know, we were all like so sure of ourselves in the worst way, kind of, kind of, you know, we had a taste of like uh, a little success and we thought we knew, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe that, that was where I was at least. So anyways, we didn't get anything for a week. And then, you know, we were always like, what's the next wave? What's the wave? What's going to be the next trend? Nah, nah, nah. And then like, we finished this week miserable and Gian came up to me and he's like, so like how to go, how to go, whatever. And I'm like, man, I'm just, I don't like... I just don't know what the fucking next thing is going to be. And he's like, oh, that's so funny because I think of you guys as the people that set the trends. And I was like, oh, like it, I all I had to do was like maybe think of myself more so like that. And it could be like, what do I want to be? The, what do I want the wave to be? You know, so I'm in that mindset now. I'm I'm like, you know, and I've also have again, this is like my answer is, is because of, you know, when we wrote don't start now disco was fucking nowhere it was nowhere like I, you know and people would be like do you think your duo single is going to be a hit and i'd be like i don't know if i don't know if this goes the wave honestly i don't know i don't know and like i have some you know and 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 again the reason it worked is you know i i don't know like like doja cat say so came out at the same kind of time and like Maybe it was like a collective consciousness or, you know, a lot of songs were kind of in the writing world were starting to be disco-y and like, you know, it just happened to work. But like <laughs> nowadays I, I want to try to choose the trend or, you know, but I always, I'm always considering top 40, you know, like I'm, I'm not, I, you got to have your anchors of familiar familiarity, you know, like, and then a little bit of originality. I'm not. I'm sorry for going off on tangents. Um. Okay. Uh, Daniel Moran 182 says, I need a girlfriend. I wish you luck. Um, what do you do when you have a session with someone and your creativity and mind just goes black? Uh, I don't know, but that happens all the time. It, it, it happens. And when it does happen, I at this stage in my career, relax. I don't try and force it and I apologize. But I don't know, five years ago I would have had an anxiety attack. Um, how can you fill up your sessions with 100 plus tracks? All mine are like 20 tracks, but I want to grow. Um, 
they kind of just end up being there. I don't know. That's an interesting question. I just keep adding shit and adding shit and adding shit. How do you how do you do it with twenty tracks? I mean, uh, every track serves a purpose. So I guess whatever purpose each one serves is the answer to that question individually. <laughs> so I print my verbs. You know, I like to have. I don't know. Fuck. Now I'm stoned. All right. Uh, Ian, one of those streams, can you record yourself singing on one of your beats for funsies? No. <laughs> no. Um, okay, what are some examples of your anchors of familiarity? You always say it, but never speak specifically about it. Uh, in a gong with the questions. What are you trying to get? What are you trying to get me with a gotcha? <laughs> well, you got me. Anchors of familiarity. Okay, here's here's an example of an anchor of familiarity. Like, if you're doing... Like I hear in fucking um, tons of pop records, the Stuggle Snap, right? Where is that bitch? This Snap sample. Mustard uses it. That's an anchor of familiarity. Like, is is that? Now, an anchor of familiarity can, all, can also be a... Uh, okay, so like a lot of um, trap songs until Taylor Swift put it in its grave that r there's like rhythmic anchors of familiarity like like those quick little things those are like something you hear you know for me that's like an anchor of familiarity or like uh uh you know cadences of 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 the way you deliver your your top line like the rhythms can be an anchor of familiarity i'm saying like anything that can remind you of like oh i've heard that done before you know that's an anchor of familiarity. Um, all right. Dun, 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 dun. How do you get low end that's felt and not so much heard? Big wide mixes, etc. I can mix and master well, but getting that 40 sound and thick bottom end is tough. Yeah, you know, dog tats, you know what you know what wave I'm on with respect to that shit right now is you know. Um, I don't know if you're, well, who cares if you're here earlier, but, uh, fuck, this is a big one. Um, okay. Basically when it comes to low end or like wideness, think of it like starting, you're not going to get any dynamic if you're starting at the ceiling. Like if you're starting with shit panned a hundred percent left and right, there's nowhere to go. If you're starting with shit peeking out your master, there's nowhere to go. Like, I think that, and like, here's the wave I'm on right now. I've realized that like, and a lot of this came from listening to like a, a lot of Skrillex's stuff. Like I, his, the, his mixes uh, are so like, the low end is so well managed. It's so well managed. And, and I realize it's because like, they're they're establishing that what that oh fuck it's so hard to explain it's like if if you for instance if you just open up a project and then like play some low sub note you're like wow that's fucking thick but after you add a gajillion things that sub gets lost and you're like oh that sub's not thick enough but it still is it's just not in the right place or it's just not like you know like you can't turn it up because there's nowhere to go so like Right now, I'm I'm like, you know, I want to establish. Fuck, I'm so bad at explaining this right now. Basically, if your sub lost all of its low end in the process of making your song, or your song lost its its you know thumpiness, you've got to do like house cleaning. You know, you got to look at all. Uh, there's only a, a certain amount of space. So it's like, I'm sure that if you turned every track down except for your bass, all of a sudden your song would have that low end, you know? And it's like, yeah, it sounds logical and everything, but I, I, I'm telling you, as, as dumb as it sounds, like, we don't do this enough. And by we, I mean, like, people like you and me. Like, I get lost in the sauce way too much. And I just, I'm starting at, I'm starting too close to the ceiling. To where I'm like, this is not hitting enough. And I just fucking boost, 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 boost. 
And I'm just like, I'm just running into a fucking a wall, you know, because there's nowhere to go. And it's like, yo, bro, everybody calm the fuck down. Come down 5 dB. I'm going to, I'm turning everything down 5 dB, everything in the whole project down. I'm turning my master out 5 dB lower. So now my clipping is 5 dB lower than where it was or whatever. And then I'm, and then I, you know, then work from there. That's, that's the answer. It's, it's also uh, how they, re it's not the elements in your song. It's how they relate to each other. Cool. I think that's the best answer I could provide on that one. Um, <laughs> do you ever let people send you stuff to listen to so that you could tear it apart and tell them the stuff they're doing is shit? No. I mean, if someone's really braggadocious, I'll tell them this is maybe not that great. But a lot of time, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, sub has to be out of sides. Keys mania, keys mania. That's a that is an important part. The the stereo image of bass can fuck up a subwoofer because it'll cancel itself out. You know, if you're listening on a sub, but even like if you have stereo bass in a car or something, it might cause weird phase because the Keep your bass as mono, I think, for the most part. When it's when it when it comes to the low low stuff, not not for any other reason than it just might sound weird or like you might lose energy in places you didn't mean to on a phone or something. I don't know. Just don't do it. It's bullshit. Just don't do it. All right. Uh, where do I find the Stuggle Snap? Really? This it's 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 in every splice pack. It's just rename something. Like, I don't think Stuggle is the name of the actual snap, but, like, that snap is literally everywhere, and I bet you I have, like, three of them rated. That sounds like it, too. That sounds like it, too. Ooh, that's a good one. Cashmere. Um, anyways. Here, just sample this. There you go. I'm sure it's not originally called Stuggle Snap. It's probably whatever directory it's in. Um, all right, what else we got? Let's do a couple more. Um, uh, um, Ian, have you ever started to layer elements in a song, then all of a sudden you start to hear weird frequencies and other sounds? Um. Yeah, kinda. I mean, only actually only like when when things like things like this 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 synth actually like have weird interactions going on. You know, these. I like the. But, like, you're talking about, like, how, you know, things will cancel each other out. Oh, my God. Oh, wait. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, sometimes the combination of things can cause, like, a sound. I'm like, where the fuck is that sound coming from? And it ends up being, like, a combination of two things interacting with each other. But not, not very much. Not very often. That was a dumb answer. Um... Do you write orchestral music? I do not. Uh, oh, fuck. These questions are so intense. Okay, fine. Baby Lords. Ian, how do you approach compression <laughs> and making master tracks sausaged versus then sausaged? <laughs> um, you know what phrase? I don't know who told it to me the first time changed my life it, um but who's i don't know who said this to me but someone said to me everyone has a volume knob and i was like holy shit you're fucking right <laughs> so i put i'm gonna i'm i'm for dynamic because yo if you want that louder turn it up you lazy piece of shit <laughs> but this is an answer coming from ian today ian 10 years ago would have been like, bro, I just fucking twit that L2 on there, bro. I just fucking smash that shit. All I want to see is red, dog. I don't give a fuck. So, <laughs> between those two. <laughs> um, 
uh, is getting digital hardware gear synth drum machines worth it? Is it tactile? F you know, that depends on you, Venka. I, for me, I, you know, I bought a few, I bought like the Poly 8 and I bought a Moog and I bought some things and they're in the closet because software emulation is just getting so good, you know? Um, da, 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 da. Thoughts on how you decide what direction to take with each. Okay. Tim Tam asks, thoughts on how you decide what direction to take with each artist. It all comes from conversation with the artist. Like I might bring in a few ideas, but I want to read the room kind of shit, you know, but that's my, that's my thing. Like there are producers that, um, you know, say shit like you should do this and that. I'm not one of those producers. I'm just like, a, so what's going on? Spill the tea. Like, let's talk. Um, yeah. Compression is a guy. Compression is a guy. Um, Oh, quotient. Here's an easy one. What did you have for lunch? I didn't eat lunch. I had a good dose of therapy. <laughs> um, da -da 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 -da. um, all right. Any more questions? Baby Lords, with respect to dynamics, serve the song, you know? Leave some room to expand so you can make whatever you want to hit, hit. You know what I mean? That's all you got to worry about. Um, all right, well, fuck, I guess we should wrap it up because it's seven. Um, all right, let's do a couple more because I really love talking to you guys. How long did it take to start feeling somewhat comfortable in sessions and pitching your songs? I'll let you know. <laughs> it's still nerve wracking sometimes. Um, it depends on how I feel that day, but, but the nervousness never goes away ever. There's nothing worse than a fucking silent room when you play a track and, and no one's like, oh, cool. I'm like, oh, shit, that's all I have. Worst feeling. That's okay. pretty neat. No, it's not. Um, do you do all the programming yourself? Or do you hire musicians to play in tracks? I do everything myself. Um, do you follow any British, European trends in music? I have no idea. But they follow me. Just kidding. Do you have a drum kit out now? I do, but it's covered. Lyrics in mind. Or does it... I, I don't really uh <laughs> I I don't I don't know if I can I don't know how to answer. Um uh, Marshall asks how big of an impact does Skrillex have on you as a producer? Huge. Huge. Uh Skrillex is like Skrillex for the longest time would give me examples of things I didn't know were possible. He'd be like, Look what you can do. Like you can do this too, you know, but you're like like Literally, like, technically and also, like, what works in a song, sonically. I don't know. All I know is the first time I heard, I think I heard, like, the first Skrillex songs I ever heard was in a remix. It was, like, I Squared remix or something like that. But when it does the, like, I, I think it was, like, J -j 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 drop the bass. And then it does, and, like, I got, I was in bed. And I woke my girlfriend up at the time. I was like, oh, I like jumped out of bed. Like, what the fuck did I just listen to? Literally like redefined Sonics for me. I could gush for hours, but that dude gave us all permission to rage production wise. Um, uh, oh, thank you, Nosh Rain. Um, do you get it regularly? <laughs> Texas Poon Tappa asks, do you get it regularly? <laughs> I love how your name <laughs> makes it like, I'll be like, get what? But then I looked at your name. <laughs> um, um, did do you plan on doing Twitch beat battles? Nah, I don't think so, man. My source of inspiration now. Or are you at the point where you're like, bitch, please, I'm Ian Kirkpatrick. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, my inspiration now is like, okay, so see, here's, here's an example. My, my inspiration for me now is that, hey, I know, I know that it's possible. Oh, fuck. 
I'm not flexing, but Shakira is texting me. Okay, I have to go. Um, my source of inspiration now, that was so lame, I'm sorry, is that I know it's possible to do, I know that it's possible, I have it, I have it, there's a good chance that something I do can be heard by a lot of people, so that's inspiring to me. Um, before I had things heard by a lot of people, the thought of having things heard by a lot of people was inspiring to me. Um, but what inspires me right now? I'm in, I'm inspired by like ideas now, you know, like, like what, what, what we were talking about earlier about how, like, uh, you know, if, oh, my song is like missing like low end and, and, um, you know, how I was like, you know, we turn everything down and then like all of a sudden your song has low end. Cause it's like, it's not the actual element. It's everything around it. Like I'm inspired by that thought right now. Uh, like I, I you know, was working on a song, um, that I wrote with, with Tate McRae and Julia Michaels and like, it's, it, it's like Paramore meets Trap, right? And so I was just thinking like, oh, it'd be so cool to have like live drums mixed with trap drums. It's not like revolutionary or anything, but like I want the, I want the sharpness of the trap drums, but I want the room and like this thrashiness of the live drums, but I'm going to, but like, and, and, and like finding a way for them to relate, you know, like I'm inspired by like, oh, how can I do that? You know, like. I think I'm inspired a lot of the times these days by sonic ideas. Like, how can I use stereo field uh, to 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 increase dynamic? You know, like something broad like that. That's where my inspiration comes from. Now, when it comes to songwriting, like, and when I'm in the session, I'm I'm like an empath. You know, I I just I I don't I can't write from experience because my experience is sitting in front of a computer most of my life. So. I'm like, I live in the sci-fi world in my head and, you know, go and try to extrapolate the story and, you know, be like a fucking empath expert and like live vicariously through whatever story we're telling. Um, musically speaking, um, I don't know, what am I fucking listening to now? The 90s. I don't know, man. I, I mean, th this is the songs I've recently liked. Oh, dude. Boney M. This fucking Ma Baker song, yo. Have you guys heard this shit? This shit. This fucking vocal. Listen to this vocal, by the way. Wait. Fuck this shit. Okay. I want you to listen to this vocal. Maybe I've done Maybe I've gone over this before, but... His vocal is like, She was a dude. I think I heard this on TikTok. The main vocal, the dude singing, is like mono and quiet, and then the girls come in stereo and huge, and it's like such a moment. It's so amazing. Like I wanna, I'm inspired by these vocals. And the 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 male vocal is like just tiny and like raspy and far, and far away, and all of a sudden it's like, it's like whoa, man, that's dynamic, bro. That's 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 using the stereo. A lot of the mono of the girls' vocals is actually mono. A lot of the reverb of the girls' vocals is actually mono too, which is interesting to me. Or at least it sounds like it. Um, all right. So. The guy's voice is actually the producer? Oh, are you serious? That's crazy. Yeah, that is a TikTok meme song, isn't it? It's some some guy dancing with a cowboy hat, I think. Um. All right. Ah, oh, Luis, what's up, bro? Or Louis? Fuck, I always call you Louis because I know Louis. <laughs> Louis, what's up, bro? Please wait. We should go meditate for sure. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Um. The idea you made today sounds great. You could use it as a song chart for something. I don't know, Caleb. I don't know. I like that you like it. I don't know what... You know what? Here's what I should do. I don't even know if I can legally do this, but I'm just going to stream out the fucking stems. That way you can... You can you can make a song out of it if you want. Hmm. 
<laughs> so you can get that little ending. What else? And then there's this bullshit. And then this guy. Sherm, oh, Joe, I'll show you. Um, I think it was hit up three, right? Hit up. Yeah. Oh, did I? Um, I think it's okay here. Here. Uh, ooh, this might crash things, but I'm going to load it. Hold on a second. I did some other shit to this. Like the, I, I, I changed something in here. Don't you crash, you little, you little fucker. Hold on. Loading. What is, what is taking so, okay. All right. Oh, look at these surprises. Okay. This is actually great. This is actually great. This is good. Okay, so the original loop is... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. What the fuck? Okay, hold on. Let's see what the original loop is. I mean, uh, it's probably from, I don't know, some loop. Torque. Adds the low end. Wait, 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 what the fuck is the EQ doing? Oh, there's a little EQ. This EQ is before everything. And then spiff. Woo, that shit is nasty. But so since, since spiff is um, making the transients sound a little more natural and like punchy, I chopped it up to like What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> what the fuck? I think I did have multiple ideas on this. Oh yeah, this is a really weird sound. This is just, uh, this is a failed start, you know? I don't know. I obviously loved these drums and tried so many different things to them. But yeah, the original idea was... Same drums with lossy on them. Oops. I don't remember what I did with the... Oh, yeah. Wait, what's it? <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I don't know what is... Whoa, okay, anyways. Um, the drums are... What is it? D L. What the fuck is that? Hold on a second. Let me let me find out where they're from. Um, hold on. Oh, you know what? I'm pretty sure. Oh wait, I can't do it this way. Splice. They're not from Splice. They're from. I think they're from this weird uh, Final Breaks thing. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Vinyl breaks. Acid vinyl breaks. Or vinyl breaks. This shit is... I got this online like 10 fucking years ago. I have no idea where... Uh, a lot of the... But you, this is not like a sample pack that's like royalty free. A lot of these are sample. This is from the, the Wild West days of the internet. So these are, these are from songs. I like, you don't know where these are from. 
These are just the ones I rated. I mean, I'm sure these are records I don't know. There. There's a loop that was in this song. These drums are phenomenal. I'm telling you, the internet is a big place. You can find these things. That's where I found them. I have no idea, like, that shit might have been a sample trading session, like, where, you know, I have 10 years before Splice of worth of samples. Okay. Um, Brandon Chaney Music asks, have you thought about doing a feedback stream? Yes, I have done that once, but I did it, like, on Zoom. Oh, no, I did it. Did I, did I do it on Zoom or Twitch? I don't know. I did it once. It was, it was fun. I should do it again. Poorly produced. <laughs> Wait. Wait, what? G good for you? What song is that? Oh. Sorry, I thought... <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't heard... Uh, Wait, let me see. Have I heard this fucking song? I have, I have not been on the uh, Olivia, whatever her name is, train. I haven't been paying attention. She is fucking going nuts. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. I'm out of touch. Let's see. What is this song? Oh yeah, the Paramore one. Yeah. Yeah. It. No. I. I'm, I've. I've heard this. Yeah. The production's fucking whatever. I mean, you know, it, it's. It's not like, but it's one of those songs. It's like no, maybe you can hate on it, maybe as a producer, and be like, yeah, there's no fucking. You know, I. I don't listen to that and say, oh, this is an interesting production. This is. It's a recreation of Paramore. You know like a shitty recreation of Paramore, but it's a great fucking song. So like part of me is like, who the fuck cares? Like it works. It works. You know, it's, it's not my style, but I think it's, it's great. You know, whatever. Like, I don't know. Does it like, you know, it's actually, a, it's a really good point actually that like, I remember when, um, when Swish Swish came out, when Katy Perry did Swish Swish, my first instinct was to hate on that song. And then I was like, I, you know, even though I know the writers and I love the the people that worked on it, like I, I love it. And I mean, you know, I hate my own songs. Like I, I either hate a song or I love it. Anyways, my inclination was to hate the song. And I was like, this is just dumb. You know, like this is so stupid. I feel like this is a song. Where, and, you know, and I was so like pompous. I was like, ugh, you know, this is not real music, you know. And then my, you know. My dumb ass is, uh, you know, we were, was out one night and it fucking came on and I was like drunk and I was like, this is so fun. And which made me think like, who the fuck do I think I am? Who the fuck do I think I am? Like, what am I make sophisticated music? Like, fuck you, Ian. You know, so it's like, yeah, I could say I don't like the production of that, but also fuck me, you know, like uh, who cares? Like that shit works. It, it sounds, you know, <laughs> I it's. You you will find yourself being constantly humbled by music, no matter how much you know, because it's so fucking wild, and the shit that you thought would never work works, and and something you were sure was gonna work failed, <laughs> and it's even crazier being behind behind the scenes and seeing like you know huge million dollar videos being made and songs just fucking failing. Like it's it's so humbling that like I I can maybe say I don't like it, I don't like the style of production, or I think it's a shitty version of Paramore. But also, I should go fuck myself. You know, like, who, fuck me. What, what, you know, yeah, I would have produced it differently, but who knows? Maybe it wouldn't have fucking gone off. Nah, that shit would have banged. Let's be honest. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I'm just playing. I don't, I don't know who the producer is. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm sure he's fucking awesome, but I don't, you know, I'm ignorant. Like, I don't know any better either. So, whatever. All right. Um, Olivia Rodrigo could release a voice memo and become a hit. I mean, she does have a great fuck. I mean, she does have a great voice, though. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm about it. Um, all right. Oh fuck me! I gotta fucking answer some, some shit. 
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I fucking love you guys. Thank you so much for making this so wonderful. What a great Friday. And uh, I'll be back sooner. Uh, I'll try not to make it such a long time between the next stream. Um, but yeah, I appreciate your patience, obviously. So, um, how do I how do I turn this thing off? Where's OBS? No, really, I don't know how to end the stream. Oh, there it is. Found it. Cool. Wait, what else? Are we, what? <laughs> Stupid ass. <laughs> oh, the Apex twin. I have all these like unused objects. <laughs> oh, there's Rick. All right. Cool. Oh, right. The standby. Wow. I have so many. Uh, what's this one? Oh. <laughs> Uh, unfinished ideas <laughs> no BS <laughs> alright love you guys bye